If you haven't done so yet, pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. What we'll do at the beginning here is just draw a picture that captures the information being described. So here's a pretty simple picture that represents the information. We have the projectile being launched with an initial velocity that we have marked V0, and it's launched with a particular angle above the horizontal that we've labeled with theta, and then it travels in a parabolic path until it reaches the ground eventually. Now in part A, it's asking us for the projectile's velocity at the highest point of its trajectory. So if we go back to our diagram, we can mark the highest point of its trajectory right here. Now when solving a projectile motion question, it's a good idea to first identify your initial and final positions. Now the initial position would be at the launch point, so we can mark that in our picture. And then for part A, the final point or the final position would be at the little dot that we had marked, so we can put the word final there. And then after doing that, what we're going to do is organize the information into a kind of table. So let's take a look at that. So here is the table, and we're going to organize the information according to x and y components. We have the initial velocity, the final velocity, acceleration, time, and displacement. Now in the x direction, we know that the initial velocity is going to be v0 multiplied by the cosine of the angle. And if that isn't obvious, you can go back to the original diagram and you can draw a right triangle. And the right triangle would look just like this. The hypotenuse of that right triangle would be the initial launch velocity. We have the angle, that's mark theta. And then we can see that the x component of the velocity is pointing to the right and that it, it is adjacent to the angle of theta. Because it's adjacent, we use the cosine. So this would be v naught times the cosine of theta. And then the y component is opposite from the angle theta, and so we would use v naught times the sine of theta. So actually we can fill in v naught times the sine of theta for the initial velocity in the y direction. Now in the x direction the acceleration is going to be zero, but in the y direction the acceleration is negative 9.8. And because the acceleration is zero in the x direction, that means that the final velocity in the x direction is the same as the initial velocity. So we can mark this as v naught times the cosine of theta. Now in part a, we go back and we look at our picture and we know that the final position is right here. It's important to understand that at the highest point of a projectile's trajectory, the final velocity in the y direction is zero. And so we can write that vy is equal to zero. That's very important, so I'll say it again. The final velocity in the y direction at the highest point of a projectile's trajectory is always going to be zero. So we can actually fill in zero into the table. And then we're ready to actually answer part A because it's asking for the velocity at this final point. Well, in the y direction it's zero, and therefore the only velocity is the x direction. And so this would be the correct answer to part A, v naught times the cosine of theta. We simply have to plug in the values. Now, v naught, the initial velocity, was given to us as 60 meters per second and then we would multiply that by the cosine of the given angle, which was 30 degrees. And if we work that out, make sure your calculator is set to degree mode, we get roughly 52 meters per second. So this turns out to be the correct answer to part A. Remember again that the final velocity in the y direction for part A was zero, so we could pretty much ignore it for part A of the question. We only had to consider the final velocity in the x direction. We now move on to part B. And just like we did in part A, we want to make sure we mark the initial position as well as the final position. Now in part B, we are being asked for the straight line distance from where the projectile was launched to where it hits the target. Now the target is no longer up here at the highest point, and so we're not going to mark this the final position. It's actually going to turn out to be a little bit beyond that, so why don't we just mark a point right here and call that final. And what we're searching for in the question is a straight line distance from where the projectile was launched to this position right here. And so for now we can just call that D perhaps, and that's what we're looking for. But let's go over to our chart and begin to fill in the known values. Rem remember that the initial velocity in the x direction was v naught cos theta, and that in the y direction was v naught times the sine of theta. Again the acceleration is zero in the x direction, and it's negative 9.8 in the y direction. For part B, we know the time is 4 seconds, as stated in the question, so we can fill in 4. 
In the x direction, since there was no acceleration, that means the final velocity will be the same as the initial velocity, so we can fill that in. And then we don't know these other values here. And what our focus is going to be on is the displacements, since we are being asked for a distance in this question. If you go back to the diagram that we had, we had marked the distance that we're looking for. Let's go ahead and mark the displacement in the x direction with this line right here. And we can label that delta x. And then let's mark the displacement in the y direction right here, which we can label delta y. And so hopefully we can see that we just drew a right triangle, essentially. We've got d as the hypotenuse. If we could find delta x and delta y, then we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find that distance d. So indeed, we're going to make that our goal, is to find delta x as well as delta y. And to do that, we use the following equation. And so this is one of the equations that you're learning in this chapter right now. We'll go ahead and plug in the information for the x direction, and then later we'll do so for the y direction. So sticking with the x direction, we have the initial velocity, which we can see from our table is v naught times the cosine of theta, and then the time, and then 1 half at squared. Now for the x direction, the acceleration is 0. And so if we plug 0 in for the acceleration right here, that's going to actually knock away this term. And so all we're left with is this information here. We can plug in the initial velocity of 60, the angle of 30, and the time of 4 seconds. And when we do that, we get roughly 208. So we can go over to the diagram, and for delta x, we can fill in the number 208. And now what we'll do is go ahead and find delta y using the same equation, but the y direction information from the table. And so for the y direction, the initial velocity is v naught times the sine of theta. We've got the time t, and then plus 1 half at squared. We'll go ahead and fill in the known values. Again, 60 for the initial velocity times the sine of 30 times the time of 4, plus 1 half times acceleration of negative 9.8 times the time again squared. So we'll work that out on our calculators. And when we do so, we get exactly 41.6. So that's going to be the displacement in the y direction. We'll go ahead and fill that into our chart, or into our diagram, I should say. And now we're ready to use the Pythagorean theorem because we have a right triangle right here. So we're going to do a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, or in this case, d squared. So we've gone ahead and filled it in, and then we added together the terms on the left side, which is roughly this value. And then when we take the square root of both sides, we get roughly 212 meters. And that's going to turn out to be the correct answer to the question.